everyone, and welcome to The Good Time Show. I'm your host, Damon Epps. Today, I'd like to welcome Mike Abb, the creative director of The Runway Group, the driving force behind Bentonville, Arkansas's remarkable transformation. Runway Group's mission is crystal clear, to propel Arkansas forward by engaging leaders through the five pillars, attract, retain, inspire, evolve, and invest. So to dive into the creative secrets behind Bentonville, Arkansas's success, Mike Abb, welcome to the show. Appreciate you having us here. We're over here in the lovely Blake Street house, uh, you know, a, a spot just to kick it off with you. This used to be my office. We are sitting in kind of the first rope swing offices. You're from here. You were born. I in- am here. I'm I'm a grad from 1999 BHS Tigers, uh, hometown hero. Uh, I'm that guy, Beastie Boy Mike at the time. You were one of the original DJs. There was an awesome like rave scene that was starting to develop, and they actually at the Fayetteville Fairgrounds had some kind of infamous raves at there that really turned a lot of people on to jungle and drum and bass specifically. Okay, got it. Uh, which kind of led people. But that was Fayetteville. Bentonville didn't that, even exist. Bentonville yet. didn't exist, but you know what? That stuff was hard to find. Hello and welcome to the Good Time Show. I'm your host. You know, not Dave to just switch all today. I'd like with to you, welcome but, Mike you know, Abb, the why creative director of Runway. Are we doing a lot of this driving because force this behind town Bentonville, Arkansas's that, remarkable as transformation. All small towns Runway Group's are, mission is very clear: up, you know, to propel Arkansas woods, forward deep, by engaging with, leaders through you know, the conservative, five attract, retain, inspire. Evolve and right there and in the buckle. So to dive into the, the creative Belt secrets and, behind Bitten Dark and Success, insulated. Mike Abb, and you add on welcome a layer to the of show. Corporate culture, then you add on a layer of kind of high risk investments that are taking place outside of the community, but by the people in the community, which I think adds a fair amount of you know uh, stress that you don't even know as a kid. You don't even realize what the stress people mm-hmm. in your community are dealing with because they're making you know pretty high stakes plays I mean, right they were building ten thousand stores in 20 years i mean it's it's funny when i think about like walmart because when i came to this town i knew nothing right i i had never heard of tom and stewart i had never heard of the i mean I, you know i've heard of walmart sure. obviously but when you go to walmart in california you're not thinking Hollywood, about arkansas yeah. i'm not thinking about arkansas i'm not even really thinking about who created walmart i'm yeah. just thinking about like, you where's know, these cheetos I yeah where's go. the cheetos and like how can i get a two dollar outfit to Walmart hasn't been around forever. I mean, Walmart yeah. was a a guy who, I mean, Sam Walton, what, like, he had actually years. hung out with my uncle at one point, at one time, playing golf. Wow, honey. So, so it was like, you know, he was alive during my lifetime to think that this place has just started kind of within, you know, one generation to be the biggest company in the world is... America's kind of interesting that way, right? right? You know, America has these examples, you know, right, wrong, or indifferent. We're underneath the kind of capitalist uh, new country government, you know. So there are these amazing ascents to incredible wealth and and holdings. and But in many ways, people uh, that work for those things are the ones that are somewhat forgot. You know, you remember the founders things, but one of the really, I believe, best, why Bentonville's story is truly special is because it took the whole community to build that Walmart to build. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, I mean, what, like what's your idea of that? What does that, what I mean, does that mean to you? People Cause... gave so much of their lives to those early years because the, the stakes were so high. I mean, the, the expansions of the company are so beyond what has ever been done. Nothing's rolled out like that. We're talking thousands and thousands and thousands of stores and distribution centers and clubs and, infrastructure hubs and, you know, all the things that go into doing that while developing the best logistic systems and data captures and analytical knowledge and ordering programs and software development and efficiencies in so many sectors and the NAFTA and free trade and and who's going to do what in the world and whose role will be what and how we're going to do that. And it's beyond and people here, you may say, oh, there's a couple thousand people in that little haystack out there in the middle of the country. You never know. Just like it's almost like you never know what's in someone's garage or something. You're like right. always marveled at like something, you know, and, and communities can be like that too, you know, and you never know. And we happen to do it and do it in a big way. And that took a lot of leadership, you know, a la Sam's vision and leadership, but he had, you know, beyond help too. Uh, and so many different factors led to his success and then ultimately the town 
were large stakeholders in this. Unfortunately, my family wasn't, but minis were. <laughs> and, uh, and a lot of that did pay off for so many folks. And the stock split twice, boom, boom. And much of that early rise was built on, hey, man, you know, work hard today. Here's some stock. Can't always pay you as much. And I think that will always be the case with large employers. We always want them to, to pay their workers more, but we don't always see all what right. is business. But any which way, they that stock split. And overnight, a lot of people became, quote, unquote, wealthy. Yeah. And uh, generational wealth. And yeah, I've heard there was a there's a story of a, a buddy of mine. He lives next door. He's a friend of his about in uh, Beaver Lake. Mm -hmm. You know, bought a bunch of beaver. First off, bought just some property out in the middle of nowhere on Beaver Lake. Um, but he was one of the very first, not even drivers, like not even an 18 wheel drivers, but was like just one of the little shuttle drivers delivering kind of things. He's a multimillionaire. Yeah. He's he was an early last mile guy. He was the first, whatever. But he touched so much product. And, and, and you know, his back probably still hurts. Oh, yeah, for sure. 100%. You know, yeah. And, yeah. and so I, I hope he, he was rewarded. And it sounds like he was. And and many folks are that way. But, you know, the other side of the coin of that is, hey, you know, the those pieces of infrastructure had to go somewhere. And that was oftentimes somebody's farm. You know, that was somebody's you know, holding now, whether they could always hold on to it and they had to sell or whatever, but this was an agrarian way, way out here. So, you know, not a pretty rapid rise into changing an entire culture's way of subsistence. You know, that's company town though, but much of the workers came from here. Although there was tons of people that came in over the years, a lot of them wouldn't stay. Mm -hmm. And I promise this is, this is our segue right here. And, and why wouldn't they s stay? They would kind of get their two-year stripe. So I work mm -hmm. at Walmart, but this is way out here, and there's, there's nothing, nothing going to do, on. And I don't know, man. You know, like maybe if I'm doing this for a little while or something. And although the company still was doing it was a great well, company, and people might have been great, but there was legit. There was I mean, real look, I, issues with that. There was nothing to do. Yeah, it was hard to retain people, and so in comes the plan for kind of like recruitment and retention, and that takes the form of starting to clean up downtown, bury the power lines by the square, you know, maybe brick some things, re re reassess some value in some zones. Because we had a wonderful building pack to begin with, but things became quite industrial and just total utilitarian builds. You know, sheet metal, cinder block, it's good enough. Because we knew this day would come in many ways. So those forefathers, in a way, you know, they were very practical. And so that didn't always mean the most attractive zone mm -hmm. either. And so a big portion of recruitment and the retention was we got to make it look better. We can kind of build stuff. You can always buy and, you know, kind of build something. But how do you animate it? How do you program it? What is the life you seek to capture and seek? And, and what does that look like to actually do? And I think they looked to the third generation of the Waltons when it ended up being Tom and Stuart, mm -hmm. um, who I knew from high school days okay. growing up here. I was going to ask you how long you knew. Yeah, and we rekindled guys. when we were living in Austin together. I lived there for about 11 years in Texas. and was. Did they both live in Austin? Uh, no, just Tom did, just but, Tom, but yeah. Stuart does now as well. He's got a spot there, and so we've all spent a fair amount of time watching the rapid growth of that city and that scene and wanted to – you know, monkey see, monkey do in a way. And well, well, can't we do this? But you can't just do that, right? You know, it right. takes the people and it takes the spirit of the people and it takes the want to kind of animate things and to, and to carry out something. And you can only puppet string and try to give a, a script. You know, unscripted is your business. Yep. I mean, and that is the best business, right? You, nobody wants to be uh, an illusion of a rendering of an actor and a portrayal mm -hmm. of what you think reality will play out like. Right. You know, reality is going to play out, but we do have design minds. And so we do have what we think is sometimes decent taste or no people that mm -hmm. do. And, and we can recognize great taste and great design and, and try to incorporate that into the city. And, and that starts to become part of the new piece of the built environment. So even though we're building something, now we've built it well enough that people naturally animate it versus having to kind of pretend and hope that somebody comes into some place that's completely foreign feeling to the environment and community and, 
and you just expect for them to kind of embrace it. And Blake Street, right. House, Blake Street House is one of those investments. I mean, it's a social club. It's you know something that's very more urban, and it's changing and has evolved its its taste, but it's also changing and evolving the taste right. of its patrons. Yep. So this place is the greatest thing ever. And you know, to kind of get into what that you know what that is to kind of invest in a way that may seem now. Uh, less practical than our previous uh -huh. groups of investment and and how to source better, you know, and how to, in many ways, we're up to our same old bag of tricks with logistics and sourcing and buying. And now we're doing that with architects and designers and furnitures and planners and, and horticulturists and, you know, environmental groups and starting to holistically look at the whole thing, knowing that growth is still here because we're still shining the beacon. So every day we're growing, we're destroying. But can you fill the cup back some? This whole town fascinates me in a lot of different ways. And I, you know, that's the reason why I, I love this, doing this and talking to people like you. You have a lot of different things that you do. I mean, sure. not only are you on the city planning side, which is kind of what you're tipping in, you're also on the entertainment side with the cash studios of it all. Mm -hmm. When you came on as creative director, what are you most excited about that you're working on right now? Or what Well, I think there's a couple things that have got me excited. Not just what we've been up to, but just more of it. <laughs> um, and I think that's kind of the, the definement of Fifth Street and H Street and the Arts and Market District and its impact to our downtown kind of development. You know, the square has been it, right? It's the square, you know, and that, and we hadn't really gotten past this couple blocks. Now, granted, the mountain bike trails have extended the adventure in many places, and arguably once Kohler Preserve was put in, it shifted the city westward, and then once Osage Park was finished and Thane Field House, it shifted the city southward. But now as the new campus on Walmart comes in on Jay and you get, the Arts and Market District sandwiched in the middle. And that's where the Momentary is located at. That's where 8th Street Market is located at. Our new development, Town Branch, which is a kind of the connective tissue stitching kind of from the ledger, which is the new large office building and the new hotel packs, through kind of historic town via the Razorback Greenway path, connecting into 5th and 8th, where the Arts and Market District will be, where we can start to see more of the creative class take Hold, okay. Right. So you and I are both firmly, I guess, in, in the creative, creative class and and have been in define ourselves as such. I've been kind of a little alone out here with some of that. And not that there isn't creative jobs here and there and there are plenty. Um, but a lot of it in my mind was if you got to work for an agency basically with a product going to Walmart and you're rejiggering graphics for store displays. Yes. You're not part of the master team developing the core branding, but now there's more entrepreneurs here who are, are soup to nuts. Um, but, you know, growing on or up and that, that was kind of it. Social media has now come into town and there's a lot of hustle in that. And, you know, I have reservations about what style of creative work that is and whether I wanted to be a part of that. And I know others did as well. So I didn't see a lot of the creative class here, but luckily the museum started to employ people mm -hmm. and they were that way. And, but they've always been here and there's people there, but they may not um, have the luxury of doing it full time. Artist studio spaces like are coming in on Fifth Street and the new art space development in front of the momentary and, and even the uh, extensions of education with Thaden School. You're starting to see just these big packs of creative coming in the u of a has now got an outpost there with their little startup yeah, village that, yeah that little thing yeah cool. and the and the gorp program for the outdoor recreation products are there and we've got airship and and they're roasting coffee and new little microbrewery and then the fifth street um pottery studio and next thing you know we've got you know something that hadn't been here before you know ha really had so that's got me excited because it's the blending of all the kind of work you know there's housing component there's a economic component with jobs and walmart there's the the education piece with uh brightwater and the culinary college and u of a and then you've got the outdoor rec with the greenway right between it we've got you know kind of future housing and and upcycled buildings like the old industrial plants turned into contemporary art spaces and venue field and outdoor you know concert series and and then we layer on artwork and public artwork and 
and good design and, and common space and and boom, it's it. That's it. More than the square, more than these other spots, because it's so able to be reimagined where the square and the downtown pack was pretty set. You know, yes, you can go mm -hmm. vertical, you know, the way the layout was. So that's really exciting. That is new, new. That's not just remixing. Right. You know, there's an element of, re you know, we got some familiar pieces there, but so much of that was changed. Um, and, th and that happened just kind of for history's sake. The city had, that was the industrial side of the town. When the Tyson plant, the Kraft plant, the Walmart warehouses. What, when was this? The, what year uh, was this? This is 50, this is 20s on. There used to be an apple cider factory. Oh, okay, got it. On the, I mean, that's always oh, been. So the Kraft, that was operating. The momentary in, was in the 20s? I think they opened in the 30s or 20s. I know the Ice House did which is next door is the reason it's the ice yeah, house is because they had to ice, the ice out all that product that was being made over there. Oh, really? Yeah. And Town Branch Creek was providing all the water. So oh, everyone yeah. was like, we're going to set oh, up So here. Town Branch is it's called Town, wait, Town Branch Apartments. There's no apartment yes. right there. It's Town Branch Creek. Is That's that right. And, and we've just. I know it used to be a creek, right? I there guess there a creek. still is. And we've got to do a better job of taking care of it. And we've started some of that remediation efforts and cleaning it up just this summer that I'm I'm proud of as well. And but yeah, that's that's what's got me hype right now. Um, big stuff in Bella Vista, new trails, more mm -hmm. trails. Bella Vista is um, kind of our sister city. Amazing topography. A um, lot of people that live there work here, um, or we've become a conjoined yeah. piece now, which is really exciting and. And watching those connection points become further galvanized between the not just the Greenway connectors, but with the highway finishing there, I forty nine. So you know we're tracking some of the big infrastructure from the from the big to the small, like, mm -hmm. and and that's really engulfing in our land and runway group. But at the same time, it, it's provided me and and education every single day. You know, every day it's seeming like new information. Uh, exciting ways to look at things, stuff you didn't know mattered, <laughs> you know? Uh, and, I, and you can only know so much, right? But I think us as open-minded folks, we're looking to continue to get stuff in, you know? And, and new information is keeps me growing and keeps me excited and keeps me out there and continuing to put together the puzzle and finding more puzzle pieces, knowing we'll never be done. Right. <laughs> is even more exciting. You know, that's what it's my coworker, Brenda Anderson. Yesterday, we were talking about what it's like to kind of work through the task list of today or whatever, and all the new things that were kind of floating in and longstanding stuff. We can't went to ship to the stuff that you, you know, just received today, but it's now top priority. And, and where in that hierarchy of your time and needs do you sit? And she's like, it's kind of like the vending machines. Like, you know, those vending machines where you get something and then all of a sudden it, it just, it slides up the product and refills the slot. And she's like, it's kind of just like that. <laughs> oh, we're done. Oh, new. Product. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, we just. Put but it it's up. also the machine's always full. I mean, I'm dealing with the little old lady garden clubs to, you know, the high profile investing groups or, you know, developer this or entrepreneur that and or mega athlete to, you know, young startup person. Uh, you know, and all those kind of things in between, because I'm kind of put up to kind of keep it real in a way, you mm -hmm. know, so I often, what do you mean by that? you know, not to slant on anything, but you know, people are in sales mode a lot. Oh yes, it's just true. And, and sales mode can get overload, but it's just harder to get a, a true take when you're sometimes about to position major life milestones. And some of those major life milestones may be moving to the middle of the country in a place called Bentonville to open up shop or take a job or, or say you did or you're only here for an intern time and you're thinking about pulling the trigger to be here the full way or, you know, whatever the next steps are. Uh, and sometimes people are at crossroads on their thoughts or, or just getting introduced to a scene. And, and, you know, I'm also a longstanding member of the community. So sometimes you just want a historical perspective. So I'm often at people's intersections of, of life and decisions, and and I'm in a there to seal the deal. I mean, let, let make no mistake. I'm probably still there for the sell, uh, even though I'll, I will give caution if caught. I mean, I'm not just trying to get every old homer to come in, I'm, but I'm a booster. You know, as my right. dad likes to say, boost on, boy. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. You know, like uh huh. Uh, but so yeah, and shout outs to Steve for 
truly keeping it real. He's got a sticker on his truck that says, I liked Bentonville before it was cool. You know, which is kind of the start of our thing, you know, and Bentonville is kind of cool now. But, you know, not everybody has the lingo or has the the non-stress or, or pressure to open up to the next phase phase of, you know, yeah, how yeah, they There's definitely ex- some people that are, I mean, look, I think for better or worse, um, well, it's not worse. I, I think this town is growing. And I think some of the prices that they're asking for some things right now are just uh, like- Growing it, a little too- Well, worse. just it's, not, it's unheard of. I mean, yeah. I just saw some apartments that were- f- for rent they're more expensive than hollywood yeah and i was like okay it's not hollywood yet guys like it's still like not a pot. like that's a little crazy i feel like that i know those gonna... interest rates you got in at were pretty bad but this is but this is ultra yeah like this is you're making a pretty good profit like there's no <laughs> i get to keep the microwave yeah, after like, i say yeah, it, you know? like you know so but hey i mean if they're getting it they're getting it and it's i mean it is we'll what see. it is but yeah we'll see I, that's kind of what i think too i'm like mm-hmm. i'm like sooner or later somebody's gonna go mm, three grand for moves like that force course correction right yeah yeah. So shots um, fired. We see you. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. This has worth three million. Mm, I think it's worth. Well, let's get into affordability. Yeah. Okay. I knew let's you were going. Aff- I knew you were going down another route. With no, like, no. I think this is kind of what I've on how people's it. stance are. Yeah. You know. And yep. and and everybody. That's what you guys are working on is trying to figure out a way to make this place affordable. Well, you got you, man. I mean, you you can't expect the unevenness of the world as is already all over the place to all of a sudden not play out in front of you in your own community what illusion were you under you take that duh kind of knowledge but then you combine like raw math and then you look into mileage of your city where could it grow where would it grow where would it grow that way is it okay to always grow here is it okay to grow other places do you really have to reinforce what you have that's already good by loading more on top of it or is it okay to develop more areas and if you develop more areas is that less green space but is there less green spaces okay if it means more green space somewhere else because people are already migrating from those areas and those you know so you're taking in factors of lots and lots and you try to say, okay, well, what is affordability? You know, it is, is it, and who is it to decide? And then you say, well, wait a minute, you're pretty high up the food chain over there. You do need to be one of the, one of the people that are making a decision in your own community, you know, outside of national and international mm-hmm. and, and what we're dictated by all the rules. But yeah, we, I think we have a, an obligation to see people of all pieces of the I mean of course we hope everyone graduates to you know the non $500 apartment if that's what suits them right. or if that's what they need you know but some people will just simply want to save for other ventures it's you know it's not always about what i can afford cuz it's all i have right okay but it's also a bit of hey man i not everything needs to go to this you know there's old rules around and you know, what you earn should go to savings yep. and this. Which and, is out the window nowadays. Which people, is now, I mean, people like, gone. 80% of my shredded it. They yeah. banksied it. As yeah. soon as it, I received 50% that. or 60%, it goes to rent and bills. And then, yeah, it just doesn't I mean, make sense. So, what does that also look like for maybe more time for what you are paid for? So you could have either a second thing or a third thing. And then, how do we, if we do have you and you are, uh, a salaried worker and you have a mortgage and I say, have you, as I mean, these are traditional routes to a community. I mean, if you're in like that, it's, you know, everyone owes it to see it through. <laughs> so, you know, that's part of that retention, right? You know, how do we keep you here about how do we recruit you? We can't, can't recruit you if it's too in- expensive to mm. exist or it's too expensive to save for the next thing. It's you know it's too expensive for me to make the next investment. How am I going to have an entrepreneurial group, a creative class, if they can't save for their materials or save for their R and D or you know save for their next big you know piece of education or all all these things factor into affordability of a ripple effect that's positive for your community versus just make sure the industrial workers, the hospitality workers, have an affordable place to stay because. They're not always in that job either. So you got to be thinking about right. graduating those folks always and then refilling the pipeline. And then I think that's where automation starts to come in mm-hmm. too. And then, then we're starting to rise into technology. And, and what was the traditional job of here that would be of that 
ring. Okay, well, maybe it's working at the warehouse for y'all, throwing pallets and, you know, moving merch physically, you know, and is, or driving trucks. Mm-hmm. And not to say that those don't always still need to be for humans to do, because there's a lot of pinch on that. Mm-hmm. But that seem like the things that are hurting people the most and the, and the most that we can hopefully move into automating and free up folks to take on a whole new ways of making, making a, a living. living. Yeah. Not breaking your back. Not breaking your back. And, and maybe. I know a lot of people are worried that, you know, you're taking away these toys, but, you know, it's just, you worked in, you worked in television long enough being the camera guys and, you know, working in these. You still want to restore life. <laughs> you, I mean, yeah. you know, it's, you don't want to take away a livelihood. Yeah. You want to be able to, I mean, I worked at the warehouse. That's how I got my startup. You know, I mean, I came right out of the kind of the Bentonville system and it, and it could have gone a couple different ways. You know, I could have, I won't say be stuck, but I, I think for a lot of people in rural America or small towns or areas that are only one option, kind of go to U of A and maybe work at Walmart or, you know, Tyson or JB Hunt seemed like that was your only options. And you had the wanderlust even stronger. And some of the stuff that's got me excited is now kind of the next pays of the puzzle is like inspire and evolve you know i've recruited you i've retained you what's my inspiration to keep you how do you evolve um by being here to be more than this is the journey we're talking about right. i'm more, on that journey more than stocking you know and and yep. you know and i think we've got obviously the president of of walmart doug mcmillan was a stock boy and came all the way up get to, out of town oh yeah he came he i was, did not know that. he was in the farm league get from, out of town he's Hometown Doug McMillan here. was a hometown hero that all the like, way through. Get out of town. No, hundred percent. Okay, I for sure did not know that. Yeah, he hundred percent. And uh, not that I get to be akin to him at all, but in many ways, uh, I have a quasi similar journey in that sense. Just so everybody doesn't know, Doug McMillan runs Walmart. Yeah, okay, just yeah. to let everybody I know. He's think he's yeah, you yeah, know he's, he does he does some things. He, he's, he does. He's he's done well by himself. He's, yeah. Um, yeah, I, yeah. But he's a stock boy. He was a stock boy. I mean, but whatever, wherever you start at, you you should have an opportunity to see things from the ground floor. Yeah, and the ground floor sometimes means you know at where the where it ends up, the taking out the trash, yep. you know, and and stuff like that. I mean, I still clean. I'm cleaning up trash right now. I'm working on downtown alley trash problems and my dumpster enclosures, so it looks better in the parking lot, and it's all these things that you know. So it gets granular. Anyways, inspiring, evolving people. Like, what's what's that look like? How does that how does that happen? You know, where does our design, our our anchor investment start to do that? Is it the artwork? Is it the so I was about to, I is was, it the light? Is it the is it the offerings from the hospitality? Is it the access to nature? Is it, it's all of it? Well, the one yeah. thing you just kind of I feel like our next little segue, Mike. Sure. Um, there's a couple of things that are popping up all over the place that are just super cool, and it's very Austin esque. There are neon signs that are going up everywhere. It is like a neon sign um, art exhibit almost downtown. There's there's all kinds of murals going up. The, the art scene, obviously, I guess I want to talk to you of what your, what your view of the creative, and I guess you could talk about Cash Studios and the whole nine yards sure. about what is the art scene that's happening in this downtown right now? Because I'm watching it pop up everywhere, and just every day I look up and I'm like, is that neon sign there yesterday? Is it's, that there? It's you? funny. I actually have a little segment in our newsletter, Mike's Creative Corner, you know, I've I've slotted myself into the MailChimp, <laughs> you know. Uh, hey, hey, uh, hey, welcome to Mike's Creative don't, Corner. Don't forget about hey, me. Just in case, uh, you, just in case you forgot, uh, we were doing things. And this week's post was about our first neon sign. Our first sign that we put up is in the little alley here, kind of behind Table Mesa. Okay. And there's like Moose Jaw there, and we're building the new hotel across the street. Yep. And it says Modern. And it's cool. It's got a little Sputnik, and it, it animates, and it's got an arrow pointing to the south, and it's okay. modern underneath it. Uh, it's it's so cool. It was the first one. We put that up in 2014. And last week, I was roving around, taking some pictures with my friend Larry, trying to capture some of the things, and went up the little stairwell and took a, a picture of the modern. And now that modern, which used to point to just sky is now pointing to the ledger and now pointing to the new uh mata hotel from hilton and the ledger's parking deck that has the cool fish 
you know, artwork. Yeah, on the it, fish thing's crazy. Which is amazing. It's amazing. And so I'm writing in the newsletter and it's like, that was like, you know, one of the first shifts visually, just something new, but it was Bentonville, like many small towns. Neon was a, a standard sign of the day and all my like historical records show all these great signs that we used to have before right. kind of the eighties blown plastic, got rid of them all. So it looked like it maybe could have been there for forever, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and it's weathered and patina's all on it. And, you know, it's pointing now to truly a modern city. Ten years, basically, since it's been up, and now all the infill has come all the way around it. And now if you look in that alley, and there'll be thousands of people that stay at that hotel every year, and they're going to look out and see modern. They're going to think that's a modern town. And how long has it been modern and thinking this way? Because here's this vintage sign saying it. It's funny, a friend of mine came in town, she goes, you know what would be great is if you if you did a, a coffee table book for all the neon signs mm -hmm. here, the whatever, and I go, yeah, but they've been bidding them up so fast that like, I don't know how quick that coffee table book would go, but it's- uh, well, I've got a workshop, my little- Well, tell me about the other ones before we get yeah, up there. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Tell me about the neon, give me, sure, give yeah, me a yeah, yeah. Uh, There's a lot, I think we've got around 75 signs out living in the downtown environment here and in about 80 ish in the surrounding little area i've got a few in rogers and springdale and bella vista but mainly the lion's share is here in bentonville including some pieces that were recently installed through our kind of satellite group oz art um, shout out to elizabeth and bob um, for doing all the good things there and they commissioned an artist guy spider tag to come through and do this big installation on the new parking garage which of course is you know inspired by all the previous investments so that even that little modern sign you know it, it built its own narrative up where more and more and more things were stacked on more signs more cool things and then in in many ways like the ultimate explosion with this huge parking garage full of it so yeah the neon has been an early way that i was able to make an influence in town and working with Tom Walton and a number of different neon vendors and sign makers that we knew and, and um, antique dealers to kind of continue to find vintage stuff and remix it or, or, uh, you know, just get it back up and restored or commission some little pieces. And we really were thinking we want to symbol nightlife and we want to symbol established cool. What's cooler than these signs? And boy, they're, they're, they're cool forever. So there's no questioning whether they're cool. They are cool. They're cool. So check it out. And then, hey, man, we don't have any scene after 5 p.m. The square's dead. It's dark. It's still a ghost town. We've done all this work, but we're still... And now these restaurants are closing at 7. They're not even doing dinner now. You know, it's like, what can we do? And let's start lighting up the scene. Let's make it more vibrant down here. Let's make it... And this is like 2015 or This is or 15, you know, 15, yeah. 16. And then by 17, we'd had 10 or 15. And then over the next three or four years, I put up dozens more right and then we were doing murals incrementally and you know there's right. been a lot of buildings that kind of up and down so you know r.i.p to some of the cool stuff that was uh which is also neat too because it's like what was controversial you know by doing one at all is a distant memory oh that's funny and like now it's just is there's just artwork other places and those folks that you know may have been like you know, really surprised or thinking that we were just tattooing town, which we can do, yeah, you know. Yeah. Uh, uh, heaven forbid. Heaven forbid. But, you know, some of the stuff, it's not meant to be for forever in a lot of paint cases. Right. And so it's it's a way that the town kind of uh, is a living canvas in a way, in a way that we could make a micro investment that, you know, we're not going to punch up with Crystal Bridges, but, you know, it's scrappy do over here at, at Runway Group, you know. <laughs> With what budget I was able to get, what influence I have in the community and finding stakeholders and right. like-minded folks and connecting the dots and saying, hey, man, you know, let's let's make it look cool. And here's what we're thinking and here's what we've learned. And this is what I think can be longer lasting and be okay. Like the cool halftone mural on the side of uh, Meteor Theater, which looks so great from the A intersection. You know, to what does it say? Oh, it's, it doesn't say anything. It's just like a beautiful graphic you okay, know, that yeah. comes down. You know, it's like, oh, man. And shout out to Steve Ab, Graham Edwards, uh, Tony Pierce for helping out on that. And Les Key at the Meteor Theater. And that's really where some of the rubber actually meets the road. So the stakeholders, 
integrating into the community and trying to go out and shake those hands and and that's where that real meets real realize realize you know what's happening and so if you can get through to people on all different types of levels and be like hey man i still I know you may not be totally into this, but it is for the greater good if we do X, Y, or Z. Or could you come along for at least the discussion, you know, and see if there is something that sounds like, uh, yeah, I, I'm down with that. I agree you can do this here. You know, which sometimes comes in the form of easements, you know, like mm -hmm. let us do the trail through here. Or, hey, we need to attach the lights onto your building too so the alleyway is fully lit. We can't just do a, you know, we do need you to agree. Um, and or, or even to the to the point of mainly internal sales for me, it's like, hey, 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 you know, don't forget about doing something cool here, and that that's what's been a struggle and uh, a complete blessing for me is to kind of reinvent what is work and where to find work, and which has got me putting on those value viewfinders all the time, right. trying to search for a great space that we could program or make into something there more. is so much happening that it's like and i know that the and it's very funny because when you i know when you talk you're not even allowed to tell me the secrets that yeah, yeah because all you guys have there's a sworn secrecy when it comes to some of the stuff that's happening like as all business should no, and all business should and like but it, it's mind-blowing i mean i've been here for now a couple of years and every time i blink i'm like there's a whole new, like, I mean, that Hilton building is going, the Hilton. It's up. The, it's it's basically up, and it's going to be finished soon. And then. Great restaurant, is, club, and, is this, and is this a runway hotel? This is a runway hotel. This one right here. Yes. What's it going to be called? And uh, It's currently called the Compton, which is a nod to Dr. Neil Compton, who was a major influence in uh, uh, preserving the Buffalo River and and basically for all things natural Arkansas. Okay. So, um, so it's that's got a big cool. nature tilt. To it, so. so, but the, even that, from what I've heard, maybe you can tell me this, but that's going to be like a place that has like a like a a hotel bar inside of it, and oh, like yeah, it's going cool. to be pimp. every one of those are going to have restaurants. They're going to be and, cool bars, oh, and like yeah. it's going to be yeah. I, if, I if, be I can, nice. if I can, if I can, if I can use the word sexy, I'm just going to go ahead and say it. It, it just they feels like they're going to. This is going to bring a very and you know, twenty one C is very cool. There's nothing wrong with it. It's very good, but t that's the only ticket in town. I mean, it's legitimately the only place you can stay. Already, I just kind of feel like this is going to be a different feel, a different thing. Um, not that it's going. And be they're expanding too. Twenty one C. Yeah, expanding. I've heard that they are going to go up so, or something uh, crazy. And awesome or... to Steve and uh, Laura Lee Wilson, who are, are just awesome people, and they were part of the, the talk about an early sales pitch that landed. We were only their second or their third institution. They had done Louisville oh, really? and, and Cincinnati. And then it was like, okay, I guess we're going to do Bentonville because because of Crystal Bridges. Crystal Bridges. And it was just like, wow, we're doing it. Not. You know, and, and Crystal Bridges. And that know, was kind of a, it's crazy to think it was a risk. Like now you look around and you're like, well, of course they were going to make it. It was like Bentonville's the fastest growing city yeah, and ever. Early like, and in their negotiations, they wanted to have, you know, kind of a, hey, no other hotels within this geo ring, you know, to the city and all this stuff. And they, everyone agreed to that, you know, and which gave them an awesome footing to kind of ensure their success, but also us plenty enough vision to see when that time range was over to get our act together and, you know, acquire. And oh, build. I get it. Oh, that's, yeah. that was a cool deal. So. Yeah, it was a really cool deal. That's, and a, that's a good deal. Another example of like fun learning, you know, like how to structure deal, how to make the best outcome for as many stakeholders as you can for it, and how does it propel all your various missions. Uh, and, and a player like 21C was one of those super cards, you know, it was like, we get art, we get quality lodging, we get great restaurant, we get interactive space where community can be you know we have a public gallery you know we've got cool architecture you know it's like wow 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 and it bookends the other anchor investment with the museum oh and guess what we're gonna put the trail down to it oh wow 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 and 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 if we did this then we could also do that and and next thing you know we are doing like a pedestrian only corridor through there now and so that'll right. be you know, which is heady thinking. Shut down a street forever, you know, like, wow. And so all that's like part of the snow. Yeah, where was that? When street, which street's getting taken down? So there? A Street, which is right in front of um, A Street, A yeah, Street. Yeah, A Street, 
North A. North A, not not the A Street that goes. Not the other not one. Not the not yeah, the big it's one. It's kind of it's a wonky name, you know. It's 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 A Street's where the sushi place. There's is. A and Main, and then there's the other A that's over there. That's okay. that's the one that goes to Peddlers. Yeah. And, yeah. Okay. Okay. And so little so A. It's getting for so basically oven and taps parking lot. Parking lot is getting redeveloped Redeveal. into a park. public park. Crazy. And then we'll have pedestrian only right past the new hotel. Crossing Central in front of the courthouse, you know, partnering up with the square, pushing past the bank, 221C, the restaurants and the sushi and the old bank building and the old jail. It's all gone, right? And then right into Compton Gardens, Got it. down to the Greenway, cha-ching. Crazy. Yeah. All the way to Bella Vista for the next 15 miles, as the Greenway is now extending oh, all the way up yeah. there and deeper... Fingers of the Greenway are expanding all through Bella Vista. So now you can ride that bike on a paved, dedicated path. And why, so, okay, so, so that goes, so it's going to stop right there or is it going to keep going past? The- no, it already goes past. It already goes all the way up to Metfield, in which is like a cool golf course recreation spot above Blowing Springs and Bella Vista. What well, I mean the other way, like toward the oh, new, the other the way, new, new the new home office and all that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So the Greenway will reopen because we've got a piece of it shut down right now along J. Okay, will reopen with expanded piece through the new campus, which includes around a lake and a park setting and and accessing their retail, and they're going to have a hotel. So you're going to have you know the Greenway really now tying into those master blocks of the city that we were laying out earlier. You know the Arts and Market mm-hmm. District. You know, the square to the west side, to the south side, to the north side, to the neighboring communities, tying in Centerton, tying in Rogers, tying in Bella Vista, tying in Pea Ridge. You know, how those things, and then now we're the major metro, and we already has Rogersville through Pinnacle, and then into downtown Rogers, which is just amazing now. I mean, wow. And Springdale, now vying to leapfrog people is you know, the spot Mm -hmm. and then Fayetteville, which is long standing cool. And now it's pushing southward and, and westward itself as Farmington and Prairie Grove rise up. And next thing you know, we're hitting 600, 700, 800,000 in the MSA when you count the three counties there. But we really only count Benton and Washington and we really don't do it enough. And and we need to give more love to Asylum Springs too, if they're listening on the podcast. Good things in Asylum Springs that are happening. And these are border towns now. And we think of other border towns in our region that are pretty hot, like Kansas City, St. Mm-hmm. Louis, you know, these are really impactful zones. And what does Asylum Springs look like as it grows? What does Bentonville grow as Missouri grows? And how does Jane and Anderson and Noel and all those pieces of southern Missouri become part of the, you know, super metro, you know, because a lot of these businesses and these business plans, they're based on those metrics. You know, we're not getting Top Golf till I hit that 500,000. You know, I'm not getting Hilton till I hit that 500,000. You know, and these are for major chain right. developments and, you know, or even niche things, you know, I mean, we, we can't support unless we think the MSA has this many people, you know, we're a whatever shop widget shop you know and, and we know this from our numbers but now we're, we're vying in those things and that also means more people to work for bigger scale employers so right? more jobs more, more jobs. jobs hey hey jobs, you know, i know we people. lost canoe but you know what's the next you know group we've got uh you know venture capital that's being deployed you know and of course it's in search of a large scale employer to be in arkansas you know to create more opportunity you know what is that and and division of the portfolio. So we're not so heavy. You know, you got to be thinking you know, this, it's hard to run a company hundred years. No, I think we're going to hit it. I think, I think Walmart will do that. Oh, hundred percent. But, but of course we're, we're all students of, of now the retail game and the rise and fall of the Sears and the pennies and the. For sure. I don't see that happening. I mean, I, I who knows what's going to happen in a hundred years, but I, I don't see that happening anytime soon. We all seem to really like that Walmart. And, and, and who knows? We say those companies failed. They just turned into other holdings of other companies. And so, fortunately or unfortunately for them, Sam Walton really held true to that. Like, I am going to try to make everything as cheap as possible. I'm not going to try to make as big of a profit. And just like you said, the backbone of this town is on that. 
they did everything they could to keep those prices down and, yeah. the, and they outdid everybody because they had people that believed in a town that believed in it and inspired to do so. Well, they, you know, Josh, Josh Kyle's oh, yeah. ledger, um, he told the story and I feel like it's, he told this story and it, and I really do feel like it's, it's kind of the backbone of this town. You know, he talked to me about, you know, say, uh, Sam, Don Tyson mm-hmm. and, um, JB Hunt would all meet on whatever Thursday. So I'm going to make up days, but yeah. Thursday, a coffee day, the early incarnation, of the NWA council. And they were trying to figure out where to put the airport. And they just all of a sudden sat down. They're like, where do you want to put an airport? And they were like, I don't know. And they were like, well, we got to make it fair for each of our businesses. And so they dropped a pin in the middle of a cow field in the middle of nowhere. Um, because it was equal distance to basically each one of their places. Mm-hmm. And that is kind of what that kind of attitude is exactly why this place is so strange to me. What a cool story, huh? Because mm. you still feel it in every piece of this community. You kind of feel it in like every aspect of the people that I meet and everybody really looks out for me. I mean, I, I've i had to go through a couple of things here that were like, oh, that's really a bummer. Strangers are like calling me up to go to lunch. I mean, people really just are really, just really wonderful people in this town. Um, Thanks. And I think that spirit that you're talking about with that, just to get a little perspective on that, probably I would say 75%, if not more, of Bentonville's core population have not been here over 10 years. I I would say that too. And I would say 80-ish percent have of that, I don't know, whatever percent, a, a lot haven't been here even five years. And so we like to say, and I'll give it up to Stuart for saying this, and, and this is this is a double-edged sword too, is, is I think more people come into Bentonville and absorb Bentonville's way of life than Bentonville's absorbing their way of life. I would say that. And then you look at that percentage of how many new blood people, and then you say, well, why would that be, you know, if, if however many more people aren't carrying the, the code book from before, the game plan, you know, and that's, that's that design, that's... That yeah. is design. Yeah. I, you come in and you just kind of assume a cadence and you can, and people come here to reinvent. Let's, let's get to the facts. You know, you don't end up in the middle of the country when primarily the population centers are on the coasts, anywhere in the middle of the country. Yeah. I mean, I came from Hollywood. I'm here. You know, if, it, if there wasn't something you were chasing. You know, sometimes it's the title, it's the job, it's the opportunity, it's the love, it's it's sometimes now the nature, the seclusion, the uh, uh, different speed and way things are done, you know, the different way people speak and act towards each other, their philosophy. So now those things are compounding in Bentonville's interests, right? Yeah. So they're not coming here to assume, you know, a new stance. Uh, that they, you know, feel like that they had to create, they're coming and kind of absorbing into it and just becoming, you know, which makes it a little easier of a transition for folks because that kindness that you're talking about prevails. So you can slide in now and and just become more woven without as much friction moments. And, and these are people that are in their adult days, Yep. You know, so I'm talking about where you have to still try. Yeah, you t- I, I, I'll I tell you this story. It's very funny. And, and Griffin, I hope you don't mind if I say something that you told me. Uh, Griffin Loop, you know yeah. Griffin. Um, incredible artist. Uh, for you guys who don't know, he builds these incredible planes, and he'll be on the show um, in the next several right times. Right across the street from one of yeah. his awesome um, places. Yeah. But Griffin was funny. I met Griffin. He had kind of just moved here, and we had this moment. You know, he was an L.A. guy. I'm an L.A. guy. And I was like, how do you like it? And he was like, he was like, man, I'm, you know, I'm getting, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm having moments where it's like, because it's a little town. I mean, it is a little town. It's a different thing, right? We love it. We love all the people, whatever. But it was, it was a thing. And then we both worked on this Meg Ryan movie together. And uh, during that time, I go, I guess, so how do you, it was been a few months. And I was like, he go, I go, you know, how do you like it now? And he goes, I finally figured it out. And I go, what is it? And of course he's an artist. And he's, of course he speaks in prolific <laughs> artist ways. Um, he goes, I finally figured it out. He goes, when you're in LA and in your New York, he goes, all you have to do is walk down the street and you just receive energy. Mm-hmm. You just fills you up. You're just like, whether you like it or not, whether it's negative, positive, exciting, you're just hit by it all day long. And your body's just like, oh my God, I'm on fire. You don't have to do anything. 
But then when you come here, you really give it away. So it's like, it was just a really beautiful way. He goes, he goes, now I figured it out. He goes, he goes, and anytime I need my battery recharged that I just need to be hitting in there, Dane, whatever. And he goes, but here, and I kind of feel like that just like exactly what you said is true. When I was in LA, I loved LA. I lived in very, one of the coolest places I think in Hollywood. I'm definitely not the guy that's going to sit around and be like, yeah, that LA, it's terrible, isn't it? No, I mean, it, it has its moments now for sure, but I loved where I lived. But coming here has like, I think I probably without knowing is that I didn't, you didn't trust everybody around you. You didn't have that moment of community where you felt like when you met someone, you were meeting exactly who you met, you know, or, or they didn't have like, you know, I mean, I have, you know what I mean? I, we're in media. There's not much offer here. You know, if you're not like a sales rep or something like that. There's not much I can do for you. So the welcoming and like the, the the warmness of people is just I and, I and I do I think I did create crave that you know crave mm -hmm. that of uh, community and all that kind of stuff and it is kind of here. You didn't know you were necessarily missing it. I didn't know I was missing it until I got here and you were like, "Wow, we can have a community that is different than what is out there, and it doesn't." In the eighties and nineties, I feel like you just trust everybody. You just ran around on a bike, and I that's that's what's kind of still here. You don't have to worry about the all the elements that are whatever i feel like people will take care of you know what i mean it's still i think it's getting always. better too because we've now got we're getting to that anonymity population so we're still small enough that it's like oh there's my babysitter or, oh <laughs> that's my uh old co-worker or you know whatever yep. you yep. know it's like we're getting higher and higher in that population count where it's more new faces more release of some of the corporate tensions and mm -hmm. postures, you know, where folks had, you know, maybe been a little too nervous to, I don't know, expose more of their self-expressions, you know, allow themselves to have, I don't know, it's always your freak flag fly or let your hair down. Yeah. Or, but there, there is, though, just to kind of give it metaphor, you know, there is that. We know what we're talking about. And so I've been watching that drop with folks. You know, I've been watching that change. You know, I watched it change at the Run the Jewels show. You know, I watched it change at Format Festival. You know, I watched it change at Billy Strings at Fresh Grass. You know, I watched it change uh, when we had Bentonville Bike Fest this past. A whole new group of people taking over a whole other area of town in a just all-out pursuit of fun. You know, and it was like, yes! That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. And I mean, I get I get bummed about certain things as uh almost as a way to keep myself edgy. You know, because I not that I expect everything to land, but there's certain stuff that I know are larger wins in my heart that will forever give me um the solace that this time and this effort was absolutely worth it. You know, and those moments like sheer elation and bringing powerful messages in common spaces like run the jewels on the stage, you know, <laughs> like, wow. And and more of that and, and seeing some of... Uh, Remind me again, run the jewels. Run the jewels is a... It's like a, LP a and Killer Mike and... That was an epic day. It's a, hey, I we've missed done it, it, but it's that was a crazy moment. Well, Bentonville flexed on hip hop. Yeah. You know, and that didn't happen. You know, and non pop hop. You know, I mean, so that was a pretty yeah, that was cool. impactful moment. That's what's fascinating about this town is that like there is no other place in the world that you know. There's a lot of tax dollars that go to a lot of things here, but there's a lot of personal, you know, oh sure, a, personal investment into a town that is is owned by three families basically. Or I mean, there's several. There's more than that, but but to 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 see how much that people actually care about this city and investing in this place is, is unlike any place in the world. I yeah. And I don't mince words on this. Like I think benevolence is one element of it. It's good for business to do this, right? Recruiting and retaining is where we started for this thing. Now I personally know these people and I know their hearts and their hearts are in the right place. And that's what's kept me along on the journey. Yeah. It's what kept thousands before me and thousands after me along the journey through their leadership. You know, and so it doesn't take much to kind of see that they've got something special to themselves and they're in the right places. And Arkansas as a state, Walmart as a company, 
United States as a country, us as uh, the world, we all can uh, take a little step forward and, and put ourselves in a better light and get better for whatever better means. I don't even like those words, but there is a collective. We know that percentages can gain and, and change uh, how we treat nature, how we treat each other, how we treat the future. And that's all part of what we're doing right now. We're planning for 10, 20, 50, 100 year buildings and infrastructures and needs and stuff. And golly, that just is mind blowing to me. For so many years, I was kind of working in the minutia of whatever the project was that day that maybe had a lifespan of whatever. And now the lifespans and the expiration dates are beyond my existence. And it starts to bring a magnitude to the work that you're like, wow. And then you're starting to ascend into global leader in many ways. Oh, look at this num number one company. You know, great place to learn from for city planning. Great place to learn for, for outdoor recreation. How to use uh, real estate to the most maximum advantage for this, that, and the other. Or, or, you know, pieces of land that was once a throwaway or considered unusable is now your number one resource. You know, the some holler that no one could build a home in is now the number one trail, you know, and right. just the ultimate thing. And, and so much of that starts to be the, what Runway Group is doing, what Bentonville starts to become about. So hopefully the folks that are there in the trenches all day long, and they're getting a chance to, to take some time out and listen to this type of content and trust you and your channels can get inspired for, by these type of messages mm -hmm. and be like, okay, you know, I, I think that there is some of that out there and it's not just fooey it's not smoke and mirrors it's there are some people behind the green curtain that have this type of motivation and this type of heart and this type of drive and we're going to make investments in behalf of that and hopefully you'll get to enjoy them and, and help us along the journey and make more of your own not only do you plan the city not only do you do a lot of artwork in the city but you are also the soundtrack to the city. Want to learn somebody cool? Check out their playlist. So Benville Radio has definitely been an awesome way to meet people and get introduced to great fresh content. I like to keep it on for my plants and my animals. They tend to grow well. They dig it. <laughs> I suggest you keep it on in your home. You'll grow well. Okay. You'll dig it. All right. Okay, we'll do that. <laughs> yeah, Benville Radio. How do you find Benville Radio? It's 103.3 FM on the but it's also bentonvilleradio.com. You can stream it right from the side or you, know, you can load the URL into many different little streaming apps and, okay. and take it on the road with you. So if you're ever missing a little bit of Bentonville pitter patter, you can always fire up a little Bentonville radio, maybe hear my voice come through on the waves, I like reminding you to you know listen. Well, Mike. Thanks, Damon. I really appreciate, appreciate you coming on the show. This has been a very good time. And uh, thanks for being on the good time. Look forward to seeing it. Thanks, Damon. All right, brother. Well, that's our show. If you didn't get a chance to watch the episode, check it out on YouTube and Spotify. You can also listen to the Good Time Show on Apple Podcasts or any other platform. We are always trying to grow our Planet Good Times community, so subscribe and follow us at Good Times Us on almost all social media platforms. This episode was presented and recorded live at Blake Street House Sound Lounge in Bentonville, Arkansas, a social club where people from all walks of life come together just to be themselves and make the community a better place. Till next time, good times, everybody.